My job title is International Environment Correspondent. Um, I cover issues that are global. Um, there's a domestic environment correspondent. There's someone who does more of the science of environment. There's someone in Washington. So w the New York Times is a little bit unusual in that through the contraction of journalism, we've maintained an environment desk that specifically deals with these issues. Um, me, I, I uh, was a medical doctor originally, but um, about 10 years ago started getting more and more interested in environmental issues and connected them to my interest in health and public health. Um, I, I think uh, in terms of media attention, Copenhagen did have a, a, a very long and problematic effect on attention to climate. Um, you know, people were really excited. A lot of media outlets uh, sent teams of reporters there. We had like five people with the expectation that something would get done. And, um, and it, I think it was a big letdown for everyone that it didn't happen. Conferences don't really have a story. You know, they have, uh, yes, you know, if there's a treaty announced, there's a story. There's a lot, there are a lot of side events by governments or environmental groups, but uh, my personal opinion was some of them were so stunt-like, it, it made it, they were not very good stories for serious media. They almost felt trivial compared to the task at hand. Um, I think the challenge is to find stories that are not in the meeting. You know, in a way, what you want is people to kind of touch their foot in the meeting, but to go out and find stories, because that's really what's going what's gonna to drive public attention. I think there's a, you know, the problem is 20 years ago it was the, the first, now right. there's a fatigue of, you know, people have been hearing about sustainability, they were, uh, had high hopes for Copenhagen, uh, they had high hopes for the Obama administration being more active, and instead we're in a really different world, so to, to you know, to, to bring uh, something that doesn't feel urgent or is not urgent tomorrow in terms of putting out fires to the forefront is is really difficult. Um, I sometimes think um, that could be done more effectively. I mean, the UN has a kind of long process, and if you you know, just as a teeny example, uh, because I knew I was coming here, I looked at the UN Plus Twenty website this this morning. You know, the the. The home page there is featuring something now about, you know, the third preparatory meeting for the Rio Plus 20 Summit. Now, I look at that and know what it means, but if I want to link to that for a reader, they're going to look at that and go, whoa, you know, nothing is happening, or th this is really a big, slow-moving machine. So. Are there ways to, to, to deal with that better if the goal is, you know, the problem is that the, the website is doing different things for different people, but if the goal is partly to get the general public more energized, there are probably more energizing ways to, to go about that. I think for me and I, for most reporters who work in this field, the challenge is to make a story out of important environmental concepts which are mostly scientific or data driven and you know that doesn't really resonate for readers and I think the issue for me is always yes I can do a story about a meeting and tell about you know the the perils of uh, rising CO2 but unless I can illustrate uh, that with a story and some humans and human consequences it's really hard to get it on the front page so the, the challenge really in Part of the, 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 you know, as a journalist, the, the technical challenge almost of covering the environment is to bring stories that are not in people's backyards and not immediately obvious but so important. Just to give you some, some small examples, um, you know, for years I've been wanting to write a story about extinctions, but, you know, our readers have all kind of heard, oh, you know, the, uh, the um, reports that 40% of species could go extinct with this degree of climate change, and that's really hard to, to get people to, to relate to. 
So I was looking around for, you know, well, what's a good way to tell this story? And then I came across uh, some research about mountaintop bird extinctions in Africa and found a great character, an ornithologist who uh, had lived in this part of Mount Kenya and watched birds disappear. And through his story and telling his story, you can tell the broader story of, of the extinction problem. I mean, likewise, issues about uh, alternative energy um, and nuclear power. You know, for me, Germany trying to do what it's doing now to rapidly decommission its nuclear reactors was a, was a gift because here's someone actually doing something where you can go visit the towns, talk to people, talk about their fears, their hopes, see the alternative, the solar that's being developed to replace it. So it's a way to kind of storify a concept that as a concept is really hard to get on our front pages. Well, I think people tend to think of sustainability as, you know, what, do, what did I do with my tray at lunch, in the U.S. at least. And as a U.S. paper, one of my, my editor's mantra is always, you know, well, how does this relate to people on the Upper West Side? And, and I, I used to think, oh, you know, is that really what's important? And the way in which it's important is just getting people engaged. You know, so you have to say to people, well, what does this have to do with me? Because some people are going to be interested because they're concerned about, you know, the planet or their grandchildren or, uh, you know, equity. But a lot of people just need it connected to their lives. And the thing is, I think more and more, um, and you know, without giving too much away, stay tuned for much more of this kind of stuff this year, is to connect what's going on in terms in, of environmental degradation and environmental possibilities in the developing world to us. Because ultimately, it's our consumption that creates most of these emissions. So, you know, whether they're, uh, you know, logged as, as China's or India's or Brazil's, it's often, you know, the, the table I bought that, that's creating that.